Well, hello everybody and welcome to our presentation today. Now, this is all about using the brand new Fiddler Everywhere for you folks who are more accustomed to using the original Fiddler, otherwise known as Fiddler Classic. Now, if you are new to using any version of Fiddler, this is a great opportunity for you as well, as we're gonna cover such topics as to, you know, the core value of Fiddler and why this new version of Fiddler even exists, some of the most important features of Fiddler Everywhere, and really how to use them. So we're gonna spend about 30 or so minutes together and I hope by the end your interest is piqued and you will take the initiative to learn more by using Fiddler Everywhere with your own apps and your own network scenarios to see the value for yourself. So if you are one of the folks who are new to Fiddler, don't worry, you're not alone. At its core, Fiddler is a powerful desktop tool that allows you to quickly inspect, debug, mock, and save virtually any network request and response. Just think of all the remote API requests your apps make these days. Fiddler can capture, report on, alter, and replicate all those requests. And Fiddler has been around for a while. I mean, the first version was released more than 15 years ago, if you can believe it. And the UI shown here kind of gives that away. And while Fiddler is best known as a tool for debugging desktop and web apps, I've got a little secret for you. You can pretty much inspect network traffic on any app or device that supports a network proxy. This means you can also use Fiddler to inspect traffic on iOS and Android devices. Now, if you want to see that in action, head to Telerik.com slash videos slash Fiddler and take a look at the video content here. Now, as usual, before we really get started, I need to run you through some logistics very quickly just to make sure you have the best experiences possible during the rest of our webinar today. So first off, if you can't hear me or haven't been able to hear me at any time in the last couple minutes, or at some point in the future your audio cuts out, please try connecting with your computer audio, not your phone. This issue comes up often with GoToWebinar. If nothing seems to help, just restart that viewer and all should be okay. But if it's not okay, if absolutely nothing works during our webinar today, or maybe you want to watch every moment again later, you'll be receiving a follow-up email with a link directly to the recording on YouTube. We will also be sure to send some links to some of the resources we provide today. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Telerik Fiddler. Going forward, this is going to be a key place for you to find the very latest information about Fiddler and the expanding Fiddler ecosystem. And if you have any questions at all during the webinar, please don't hesitate to let us know. Just use that Q&A panel provided in your GoToWebinar viewer to ask away. We've got all sorts of Fiddler experts on the line to handle your questions during and immediately after the webinar. Finally, as a quick introduction, the guy you see talking in the corner is me, Rob Lauer, and I'm on the developer relations team here at Progress. You can find me on Twitter at Rob Lauer. So I do want to start here with a very brief history of Fiddler and just see kind of how we got to where we are today. So let me start with a timeline, of the, the, really a timeline of the Fiddler story. Now Fiddler was first released back in 2003 as a free network debugging proxy on Windows only. It soon became kind of a default go-to tool for network debugging. Now fast forward all the way to 2012, Telerik acquired Fiddler and thankfully kept it completely free to use. A couple of years later, Progress acquired Telerik and hence acquired Fiddler. And now while some progress was of course made during this time, it wasn't really until 2019 that we saw another major, major release of Fiddler, along with a beta release of the first new Fiddler tool in some time, that being Fiddler Everywhere. Now 2020 has already brought us really close to a new 1.0 release of Fiddler Everywhere, and even more exciting updates to the entire Fiddler ecosystem. More on what exactly Fiddler Everywhere is in just a minute. So even to this day, Fiddler is wildly popular with over 100,000 downloads per month, rave reviews, and a really active and growing community. And also a set of industry pros who are really excited about the current state and more importantly, the future of Fiddler. So you may be asking, what can Fiddler do for you? It's a perfectly valid question. Primarily, of course, Fiddler is geared towards efficient debugging of network requests and responses. You know, by acting as a man in the middle, as they say, 
Fiddler can intercept literally every call between your device and the world. So if Fiddler is this network debugging proxy for any browser, any app or process or platform, what does that mean for you in terms of actual use cases? Well, we can start with the obvious. I've mentioned this a couple times, you know, you're debugging web and network traffic on any device, uh, but it also means debugging of remote API calls. Even performance testing of your APIs is possible. Analytics and monitoring can be handled by Fiddler, along with malware analysis and security testing. So it's a lot for one tool to bite off, but Fiddler has some really amazing capabilities and features baked in. So how all those are actually accomplished with Fiddler is through a variety of features, of course. Now, the first is the network traffic. So you can directly inspect network traffic calls, both outgoing requests and incoming responses. You can create customized sets of rules that respond to certain request parameters. Say you want to alter a request for a specific URL and replace it with another call or a local file or whatever. That's all doable with the autoresponder. And related to that is the ability to mock requests. So as you're building out your app and if you don't already have a functioning API in place, you can build up rules that will allow you to develop against a mocked up set of data, like a local JSON file, for instance. Additionally, you can compose API requests and inspect those responses, much like you might normally do in a tool like Postman. You can also visualize HTTP and HTTPS traffic to look at performance issues and identify bottlenecks in your app. So all good, right? Well, Fiddler UI, you know, it's starting to get a wee bit cluttered and out of date, you could say. So a couple of years ago, we knew that Fiddler needed a refresh. And we started reaching out to a lot of you and really started having meaningful conversations about what you love about Fiddler. But even more so, what do you not like? What can we do better? And we learned a lot. We learned that the way you're using Fiddler is different from how it was maybe intended to be used five or 10 years ago. And we learned that our, there are some really key pain points we needed to address. Though we're of course dealing with 15 plus years of features and UI that makes it exceedingly difficult for new users to get onboarded. The platforms we use to develop on is changing as some of us transition off of Windows and onto Mac or Linux. And the way we work with each other is dramatically different now than it was when Fiddler was born many years ago. So where did we go with these pain points? Well, we started by having one-on-one -on -one conversations with many of you, our users of Fiddler, and we worked to define what the exact problems are that we can solve. Of course, we learned right away that Fiddler needs a complete overhaul of its user experience. Gone are the days of the antiquated Windows XP UIs. And no surprise, but, you know, as I just mentioned, you all aren't on Windows anymore. Many of us use Mac OS or Linux for app development. And finally, many of you are working in teams and the way we, you know, kind of diagnose and share sensitive network logs is much different now than it was 10 plus years ago. So all of this brings us to our solution, and that solution is, of course, Fiddler Everywhere. Fiddler Everywhere is a completely new version of Fiddler, written using cross-platform technologies, yet sharing the same core code base with Fiddler. So adding any new cross-platform features is far easier, and migrating existing features from the old Fiddler is a snap as they're based on established functionality. It also has a completely revamped user experience. Now, before we were ready to release the new Fiddler Everywhere to the world, we wanted to make sure we had a baseline set of features that you've all kind of come to expect from the original Fiddler. That's why we improved upon a few key features from the old Fiddler, what I'm going to try and refer to as Fiddler Classic going forward. The first is the Traffic Inspector. Again, this allows you to view the details for all network traffic to and from your app. And again, the autoresponder, which lets you create and modify rules that can customize traffic to test a variety of scenarios. And the API Composer, which lets you see the results of API requests without having to use another tool. And back to point number one from our user interviews, that being an updated user experience, Fiddler Everywhere was built from the ground up with the modern developer in mind. The new UI is gorgeous and far easier to use than ever before. Point two, 
All updates are made available simultaneously to Windows, Mac OS, and Linux platforms. All features are supported equally across all three. And point three, team collaboration. Now let me briefly introduce you to the collaboration features of Fiddler Everywhere. By using the team features, you can save captured traffic like you've been doing for years, but you can also highlight and uh, save certain sessions and add comments to them and securely share log files and additional context with your teammates. So they can open these log files in their copy of Fiddler Everywhere and you can continue to collaborate from there. So the way this works is very simple. I can click a button to save one or more captured sessions. I provide a name for my saved session. I optionally add some additional information or context to prepare my colleague for what I'm sharing with them. I then click to share this saved session. And I can invite my colleagues to collaborate via a simple email invite. Now this allows us to securely view all the same session data within Fiddler Everywhere and without having to share potentially sensitive data in an otherwise awkward or potentially dangerous manner such as just plain text email. So you might be wondering when exactly you might want to try these collaboration features. Well, this probably applies to most of us here. Say you're a developer working on debugging an issue and you want to share findings with your colleagues. Maybe you're a support engineer working on a remote customer issue and you want to share your analysis with the development team. Or even a QA engineer just testing an app, right? You found some issues and you want to share those findings with your team. And maybe you're using a third party API. You want to report an issue to the owner. All of these are valid scenarios for using the new collaboration features in Fiddler Everywhere. So the key features of Fiddler Everywhere that we're going to look at today in more detail are the network traffic inspector, again, for looking into the details of requests and responses, the autoresponder, which allows us to create those customized rule sets of requests, the uh, API composer, that allows us to compose API requests and test them within Fiddler, and finally, the team collaboration features, which might be my favorite feature of Fiddler Everywhere that's going to be improved upon quite a bit in the coming weeks. All right, I know I've been talking a ton about Fiddler Everywhere specifically, but let me take this opportunity to inform you that the original Fiddler, Fiddler Classic, isn't going anywhere. Now, of course, those of us who have been using the original Fiddler for many years may be asking, who moved my cheese? Now, this expression, if you haven't heard of it before, it refers to how change can be difficult for us to accept, especially for those of us who have been, you know, kind of, We've crafted a certain workflow around a tool such as Fiddler Classic. I think many of us can relate to this. So say I've been using Fiddler Classic for years, it works just fine, but now we've kind of changed that process a bit with Fiddler Everywhere. Maybe it's better, maybe it's more efficient and more usable, but there's still some friction introduced, making my experience, at least initially, a little more difficult. So two points I want to make to that crowd here. One is that if you are 100% happy with Fiddler Classic, keep using it. As I just stated, we will continue to maintain it. However, I highly suggest that you watch our demo today, as I think you'll see the bulk of the features you use are available today in Fiddler Everywhere and accessible in a highly intuitive manner. And if any are missing, just let us know. Odds are they are on our near-term roadmap. All right, on to the meat of our webinar. Today, we're going to take a brisk walk through Fiddler Everywhere and cover as much as we can to make your transition as smooth as possible. And to do this, I'd like to welcome onto the stage Jonathan Pereira. Jonathan is a developer engagement manager here at Progress and turning into quite the Fiddler Everywhere expert. So give us a second as we switch speakers and Jonathan, the stage will be yours. Well, thank you, Rob. Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan and I'm going to take you for a quick walkthrough of the new Fiddler Everywhere so that you can see it for yourself. This is gonna be fun. All right, but before we get started, you are gonna to need to log in to Fiddler Everywhere. If you are an existing user of Fiddler Everywhere, you can either use your email or your user ID to sign in, or you can just create a new account with your email address. If you want to get started even faster, you can just authenticate using the Google sign-in. 
And that's exactly what we are going to do right now. And in a couple of seconds, we should be in Fiddler Everywhere. And there you go. We are in Fiddler Everywhere. So as a classic user, be prepared for the surprise. Yes, this is the new interface of Fiddler Everywhere. Sleek and clean. Uh, compared to Fiddler Classic, which felt like an airplane dashboard filled with buttons, which you never knew did what, Fiddler Everywhere makes it really, really simple for you to use exactly what you need. And the interface is so clean and neat that it actually makes you feel working and Fiddler Everywhere all the more. So today in this session, we are going to debug the Y Combinator news site, Hacker News. So let's quickly and there you go. So before we even get started with that, I need to remind you that Fiddler Everywhere by default does not enable HTTPS debugging on macOS. To enable HTTPS debugging, you need to click the gear icon at the top right corner and open the settings menu and first trust root certificate to install the root certificate on your local machine and then click the small checkbox next to a capture HTTPS traffic and save and close similarly by default fiddler turns off the decoding option for https traffic to enable that you need to click this decode button which is right below the live traffic tab all right so now let's refresh the hack news page and there you go you can see all the https sessions right here we can see that this is the session for the Hack News website. So right in the web sessions tab, you would notice a couple of things. For example, all the file types are color coded and they have a quick summary which can tell you what the file type is. For example, this is an HTML, whereas here you have a JSON and here you have a JavaScript file. Also, you can see the HTTP status code as well as the HTTP protocol that it's using. In this case, it's HTTPS. You can see the host server from where the response was fetched, as well as the URL used for the response. Other things that are worth noting is the body size of the response, as well as the method. In this case, it was a GET request. Finally, if you are using multiple browsers, for example, Chrome and Firefox, the process tells you from where exactly the request came in. Another neat feature that Fiddler Everywhere has really smoothened things out is the filters option. You can add filter to any of these and pick the traffic that you exactly want to see. So for example, let's assume we want to check all the traffic coming in from Google Chrome. All we need to do here is click the ellipse at the top and add a filter which says just Chrome. And filter and now we can only see requests coming in through Chrome. Similarly, let's assume we want to debug traffic coming in only from the Y Combinator website. For that, we are going to click a filter in the host site and just add Y Combinator and filter. So these are all the sessions that came from the Y Combinator server. Now let's click on the main session and you will notice in the traffic inspectors you can see the request headers and the response headers. The request headers would have a couple of things, for example, the request type, also the user agent and the type of encoding and the language for which the request was sent. Similarly, the response headers mention a couple of things, for example, the status codes of the response, as well as the server from which the re response originated and a couple of other things that are useful as for you as a debugger. 
Now, if you want to see what was the response, you can head over to the text tab and you will see the entire HTML response. But this might look a little daunting. So Fiddler Everywhere makes it even more simpler for you to visualize the response that's come in. All you need to do is click the web tab and you will actually see the response as it would be seen in your web browser. And this is by far one of the neatest feature that Fiddler Everywhere has and I really, really appreciate it. Additionally, you can also see any images that were requested as well as you can view the entire response in a raw format or you can view the response in JSON as well as XML if that's how the response has come. All right. So now that we saw the web sessions as well as the graphic inspector, let's get into fiddling with the responses. Now, Fiddler Everywhere has a beautiful option called the autoresponder feature, which enables you to mock a request and get the response without actually contacting the server. For that, all you need to do is right click and hit the add new rule option. And there you go, Fiddler Everywhere has already added a new rule here in the autoresponder tab. Now let's edit it and let's do something funny with this site. So for this demo, I'm going to change the first news item into something related to Fiddler Everywhere. So for that, we first need to find out where is the rank one text. Here it is. And I'm going to replace this with the fiddler URL delrick.com slash fiddler and I'm going to replace it right here and I'm going to make the text say how fiddler everywhere makes web debugging simpler let's also re uh, replace the site with let's say fiddler.com all right now you need to just save the, uh, the rule and remember to turn on the autoresponder by turning on the toggle button next to it let's reload the page and see how it works there you go. Fiddler has automatically changed the page right here. And the best part about this is this is changed locally without contacting the server. So that was the autoresponder. The composer feature is an amazing feature that you can use if you want to test and debug your APIs or debug your requests while they are online. In this case, we are going to test an API endpoint and see what is the type of response it uh, provides. So here I have an API endpoint which returns cat images because why not? And all you need to do is mention the type of request. If it's a get or a post, Fiddler Everywhere has options for all and supports all of them. And all you need to do is execute the request. And there you go, it's a 200 OK status, which means the response was successful. Now, to view the response, go to the JSON and you will see the URL of the cat image. Additionally, you can also provide a couple of things like the API authentication by providing the API keys. And you could also debug a couple of other things within Fiddler Everywhere API Composer. So the next thing is going to set Fiddler everywhere right apart from Fiddler Classic. And that is the collaboration feature. So when they were redesigning the Fiddler everywhere client, one thing that was right at the top of the mind was how Fiddler everywhere would be used in teams. That is not debugging as a single developer, but debugging in a team of developers. And I think that's something that Fiddler Everywhere does really well. So for example, Fiddler provides a lot of options for you to work across teams. 
you could right click on your request and you could first of all save a selected session or save all the sessions now since this all sessions are coming from the hacker news site let's save all of these sessions and we name them news so you will see news appear in your saved sessions tab next you can also comment on your session just to provide a little context to your teammates news website and save the comment you will see the comment appears right here so that you know there is a comment in for this particular session the next feature which is by far my favorite is the ability to share a selected session or multiple sessions so in this case we are going to share all of the selected sessions with me so all you need to do is enter an email address and that's it new sessions and click share and there you go fiddler everywhere has shared this entire session that we saved with the concerned email address that we provided and that is why fiddler everywhere is so amazing i hope you're going to have fun with fiddler everywhere over to you rob all right awesome thank you so much jonathan now hopefully you all feel a little more comfortable using fiddler everywhere now uh, before we end today though i do have just one more topic i wanted to cover and that has to do with the reality that remotely debugging issues you receive from customers is not easy. You know, you're relying on both technical and non-technical users to be able to convey what can be a very detailed problem with very little context. And oftentimes, no technical log files, right, to help you out. And to really diagnose those issues, frankly, it's not easy for those customers to even submit those network log files, especially for the non-technical users and they're worried about privacy and security of their data. Support teams waste a ton of time with back and forth between them and customers. Just collecting log files, you know, it can be like pulling teeth, and there are internal compliance and security issues they need to work around. Finally, developers don't have much to go on due to a lack of information and maybe an inability to replicate issues with the info they have on hand. Well, I'm really excited to say in the coming weeks, you're gonna have a chance to experience our way of solving this problem. And that is with a brand new product called Fiddler Jam. And at the risk of reading text off a slide, I can tell you now that Fiddler Jam is a troubleshooting solution for support and development teams to help them troubleshoot those issues in a fast, easy, and secure manner. But what does this really mean? Well, it means that non-technical customers will be able to use a browser extension for Chrome to report issues securely via the cloud. And then support engineers can triage requests via a customized web portal. And finally, developers can securely transfer those logs to Fiddler Everywhere and use the Fiddler tooling to quickly and easily replicate and diagnose the issues at hand. Now you can learn a little more about Fiddler Jam and sign up for early access at Telerik.com slash Fiddler dash Jam. All right, that's it. Thank you all so much for attending. For next steps, I highly recommend you download Fiddler Everywhere today at Telerik.com slash Fiddler and take it for a spin. And take a look at what's coming from the Fiddler family in remote network debugging with Fiddler Jam. Sign up for early access right now at Telerik.com slash Fiddler dash Jam. So that is all from us. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day.